días a todos y todas. Good morning, everybody. I would like to open the sixth hearing of the 184th period of session of the commission, which talks about the situation of uh, people in human mobility in Colombia, which was requested by the civil society organizations. I am Julissa Mantilla and I am the president of the commission. I am joined by Commissioner Estuardo Rallon, Commissioner Joel Hernandez, the country reporter, and the Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena de Truitinho, reporter for children. Uh, we also have uh, the uh, executive secretary, Maria Claudia Pulido. I would like to greet the civil society organizations in the state, and I would like to explain the allocation of time. We will start with the civil society organization for 20 minutes. I would like to ask you to introduce yourselves. Then the state will have 20 minutes. Then the commission will pose questions during 20 minutes. And then we will have an extra round for 12 minutes for the civil society organizations and the state. We have a digital tool to measure to for a timer. And these uh, hearing has interpretation and it will be in the YouTube channel afterwards. Good morning. Uh, good morning, members of the Commission of Human Rights. I am uh, Camila Becerra. I am Institute of uh, Human Rights. I am here with uh, people from the University of Los Angeles and the President of Colombia, all organizations which are part of this network, which is integrated by 11 organizations that work to promote the warranty of the rights of the people and human mobility situation in Colombia. Our presentation will be divided into three parts. We are going to talk about the barriers and the uh, uh, arbitrary uh, denial of uh, citizenship and the concrete cases of people who have been affected by the annulment of their birth registries. And we are going to refer to the specific impacts these measures have on the human rights of the Colombian Venezuelan population for our peti petition. We have to say that the Colombian uh, uh, legal status has two ways of acquiring for birth or for adoption. Those who acquire the citizenship are those that are children of Colombian nationals, even though they are born outside Colombia or inside Colombia. Here we are going to refer to those people, uh, of those people who were born in a foreign country and the parents register that birth in a, um, a, in a office, a foreign office in the country. And then when a birth is extemporaneously registered in order for this proceeding to be to be made the persons should uh, register their birth and it has to be apostilled and translated but if it cannot be accredited in that way the legislation pre, um, can um, uh, allow to witness to uh, in order to register that birth and this is the proceeding in order to offer an an alternative to the apple style when this document cannot be issued today the office of vital record is requiring this uh, re requirement and there are difficulties in order to get the apple style from venezuela Secondly, we have identified that the state canceled several identity cards due to identity forgery, and we identified violations to the due process of law and impacts on the health, uh, life, and integrity that we are going to mention all throughout this hearing. We also identified that the Office of Vital Records is uh, has revoked several of these partial proceedings, but it gives an illogical uh, term of two months in order for people to present these uh, the, the requirements that were not complied with, and uh, such as the Apple style, which is practically impossible to get them. This situation is serious for Venezuelan Colombian people, and this impact 
falls on this group and the state does not comply with its obligation to regulate the uh, mechanisms for granting the citizenship uh, for this with discriminatory effects on the population at the time of exerting their rights when as the court mentions in the case of Haitian people in Dominican Republic, even though this right is not absolute, it is prohibited expressly in the Human Declaration of Human Rights and in the Declaration of Human uh, Duties. It's arbitrary uh, prohibition and this situation was identified and it is especially serious if we consider that these cases affect people who are in a human mobility situation and have gone out of Venezuela because there is a context of a human violation of human rights and it has been documented by the commission for more than 10 years. And in these cases, legal certainty is affected and there is a deprivation of nationality that we want to prove in this hearing in which uh, and these, there is discrimination of the people and it is an omission to the duty to prevent the statelessness of the state. I would like to give the floor to Laura Gesta from Clinica Jurídica of uh, University of Los Andes. Thank you and good morning everybody, honorable commissioners. In order to refer to the violations to the due process of law, it is essential to refer to the hindrances for registry of extemporaneous birth. As Camila Becerra was mentioning in Colombia, the, the children of na Colombian nationals have the right to the Colombian uh, citizenship and they can have an extemporaneous registration of their citizenship. These decree law 356 has contemplated an exception to the requirement of the apostille, and this requirement establishes the possibility to replace the apostille with two witnesses. The Constitutional Court in Colombia has uh, uh, pronounced itself in several opportunities, especially in the sentence T2021 20, of 2018, and has referred to the difficulty uh, to receive, uh, to access the apostille in Venezuela. In Venezuela, it costs $400. It is not only them, but since there is no, there are no diplomatic relationships between the two states, the Venezuelan people cannot access the apostille from Colombia, the Office of Vital Record insisted that there is a mechanism implemented by the Venezuelan government to access to the uh, electronic apostille. That mechanism does not um, work and it has been proven uh, over time and a person who needs to have access to the apostille has to go to Venezuela, which in some cases, as Camila was mentioning, may um, incur in a non refoulement principle when those Venezuelan nationals fear to go back to their countries because their liberty, their freedom or their integrity are at risk. That is why the court has said that this is a requirement which is difficult to comply with and it comply and it constitutes an illogical requirement when 356 uh, decree law uh, allows for the possibility to replacing it. Uh, and those people who complied with this requirement have a legitimate confid uh, trustworthiness in the validity of that document, which is being annulled by the resolution 7300. Uh, due to the warranties of due process of law, section eight of the uh, Human Rights Convention is applied in all proce procedural stances and not only in judicial remedies, uh, even though the uh, resolution provides for some elements that have to do with the process of law. The truth is that the organizations that are part of this network have identified serious violations of the due process of law. First, 
the and due notification of the proceedings, but also of the marriage uh, reports. They have identified that their identity card has been canceled because they are detained by the police in the street, and they say that they are um, and they say that they their identity card has been canceled, or because they were going to the airport and they are detained, and they said their identity card is canceled. That in prevents their exercise of uh, right to defense and the possibility to um, curate some deficiencies. This resolution also establishes that the uh, re, uh, appeal proceedings are in place, but those are uh, uh, resources that are sought within the uh, Office of Vital Record because this is an institution that does not have a body that oversees it. So there is a violation of the double um, instance proceeding. The acts are also massive. Uh, we have administrative act with groups of 50 people who, which are not um, driven by anybody. These, they cite this article in an, art, in an abstract way without uh, saying which are the documents you know, on a case-by-case -case basis and the reasons for which these registrations are being denied and the cancellation of the identity cards are being act be before the act is executed or the decision is firm and this leads to an impact on which Camila Vega is going to speak about I would I would like to show you to show you some parts of an administrative act which we have uh, uh, modified because it has sensitive data of several people, but we can have some list of 50 people where the Office of Vital Record only cites reason five of this article and there is no other motivation. Good morning, President and Honorable Commissioners, uh, citations and the people present in this Hearing, I am Maria Camila Vega and I represent the Association National Personality of Colombia. We are going to show a video where we're going to show three witness uh, declarations of people who have suffered violation of their rights due to this measure. I am Astrid Carolina Torres. I was born and raised in Venezuela. My parents are Colombian and since they are Colombian, they granted me the Colombian nationality uh, I've been here for 10 years, I got married, I have three children and I had a problem with my identity card. I went to my third uh, control uh, when I was pregnant and they told me that my identity was cancelled, I could not be attended to. No, they told me, no, you cannot be attended here. I went to the office of vital record and they told me that my identity card had been cancelled i wanted for an explanation i requested an explanation why that had happened because my identity card was 10 uh, was enforced for 10 years i was really stressed i was pregnant i was really stressed i was crying um i'm sorry about the audio is not clear in order not to go there i had to do certain proceedings and when i returned to colombia i was all also going to get documents under my name i feel as a woman and i wanted to change my name to a woman name they asked me whether I was Colombian. I said that I was Colombian. My case is different. I asked her why I, why my identity was cancelled because you changed your name. I really wanted to cry. 
I wanted to die at that time. I'm Gabriela Arenas. I am Colombian Venezuelan, director of the Dub Foundation and one of the 43,000 people affected by the decision of the Office of Vital Record to cancel our uh, identity. Our uh, identity cards have been canceled and most of these people complied with all the legal requirements for all the uh, registration when they go to Colombia. They have their documents uh, which are uh, correct. They are uh, parent, they have Colombian parents, but in spite of this, they, they, did not, they do not have the access to the health system, even people who uh, had to get cancer treatment have been isolated and had been denied those treatments. Going uh, on with my intervention, I will mention the mechanisms that have been used by the people affected by the measure, measures, and then I will expose how these measure of uh, identity card cancellation have a different uh, differentiated impact in the different people and how this is even worse when there is a prior violation of human rights. Then I will make the petition. Together with what Laura mentioned, this measure does not only constitute a violation of the pro due process of law, but also the lack of uh, personal notice and the way that people found out this prevented them to exert the resources in the time. Some people um, posed a remedy even though they were extemporaneous. And, and this particularly is very concerning because the direct provocation is not a resource, it's not a remedy, and it's a fact, it's a power that the Office of Vital Record has. So one response would be to the uh, free decision of the Office of Vital Record and all the cases that we have made, we have seen that the Office of Vital Record once this finds out the uh, warranty action proceeds to uh, issue a partial revocation. This is not a sufficient measure to uh, annul the effects of the measure, and this affects 42,000 people who are in the ter in the Colombian territory. On the other hand, the measure adopted by the Colombian state have, has um, had different impact in people, not only of those people that want to have the right to access to nationality, but there is also a suspension of uh, the right to health and the right to education is also a risk and the right to free circulation because since they do not, they cannot show a document once they are detained by the police, those people are at risk. We also have uh, an election where these people cannot, didn't have the right to vote and there have been other diff difficulties such as in the right to work and the possibility to make daily proceedings such as going to the bank or uh, requesting a passport among others. This is especially serious in the case of people who have a situation of uh, vulnerability such as the case of patients of uh, certain diseases such as cancer, uh, re uh, insufficiency, or uh, pregnant people or trans people who require uh, priority attention, and they have been affected by this measure because they were um, expelled, expelled from the social security system once their document was cancelled. This commission has said that the deprivation of nationality is prohibited when the result is turning a person into a stateless. And we have identified that the cancellation of identity cards made people to be or in a migration irregular situation, which is uh, worsened by the impossibility to regularize their uh, citizenship. And in the case of children and adolescents who were born in Venezuela and whose parents had Colombian nationality, since this 
are deprived of, for their parents, this proposes a risk for the children. Having said that, honorable commissioners, the violation of uh, civil birth registry and cancellation of cards is arbitrary. The proceeding is based on a norm that was passed afterwards. Uh, it is discriminatory because it affects persons born in a foreign country that were registered in an extemporary way. Third, it violates due process as it's not carried out in an individual way and uh, is not duly notified and is not um, correctly motivated. It may create a risk of stateliness and uh, taking into account that parents suffer cancellation of cars as their nationality depends uh, of children depends on their parents and is disproportionate because it was taken uh, in spite of the fact that there exists other mechanism that may enable the state to access other uh, options such as recognition of nationality but it, it could prevent the violation of rights to legal status name identity nationality vote for example education uh, circulation and residence, among others. Having said that, we respectfully request the Commission that it urges the Colombian state for the creation of a work table that is aimed at determining uh, the channels through which the uh, violated rights are immediately ratified, uh, rectified. Also, that it enables the uh, Colombian state uh, technical assistance to reach a solution uh, within the framework of the uh, Inter-American standards. Thank you. Thank you to the representatives of the civil society. The state has the floor for 20 minutes. Thank you, Commissioner. Dear uh, Commissioners, members of the civil society, and other participants in this meeting. I would like to thank on behalf of the state the invitation to participate in the public hearing. It is one more space in order to strengthen um, dialogue with the commission. We would like to highlight that Colombia in the last few years has modified the uh, immigratory policies we comply with constitutional uh, norms and international standards. We have a policy that establishes the legal framework to improve the quality of life, not only of Colombians living abroad, but th and those who decide to uh, come back, uh, those foreigners living in the national territory, especially Venezuelans that were forced to leave their country. Secondly, we highlight the program Primero La Niñez. In 2019, the National Registry issued a resolution as an exceptional um, measure in order to grant nationality to children born in Colombia since 2015 who were in a stateless. We have registered 50,000 Venezuelan children. In February 2021, Colombia announced the creation of a statute for Venezuelans that constitutes and establishes the temporal protection measure for regulation of the status of migrants in the country, enabling Venezuelan migrants to stay for 30 years in the country, guaranteeing institutionality in terms of school, social security, health, pension, services, having professional cards, leaving and entering the country because of working reasons. In May 2022, a special measure, administrative measure has linked within the framework of the Estatute more than 1.8 million Venezuelan migrants who can access uh, basic services in equal conditions, guaranteeing the enjoyment of their rights. Within this general context, we can understand the effort carried out by the institutions to guarantee rights for situations in situation of, for persons in situation of, of mobility. 
um, establishing the framework for the measures developed by the National Registry, taking into account the legality of uh, different uh, documents and civil birth certificates. Thank you. I would like to especially greet all persons present, um, commissioners and the civil society who is participating to establish the situation of the right to nationality of the persons in a situation of human mobility in Colombia. It is a very important aspect that we should take into account, uh, starting from the fact that the political constitution of Colombia and the perspective of the respect uh, towards international law, we should bear in mind a universal principle of territoriality of law that should be understood that that possibility that the state have in order to apply rules uh, within the territory under its domain without interference of other states. However, in section four of our constitution, it is the duty of nationals and foreigners in Colombia to comply with constitutions and law and respect and obey authorities in order to, for aspects related with this meeting, I would like to mention Article 93 for our Constitution, where it says that international treaties and agreements ratified by the Congress acknowledging human rights and establish their limitation in a state of exemption. And we have then the apostle that shows that the authenticity of the documents for legal, to have a legal effect in a country, it is necessary for those who have ratified the requirements of legalization of public and foreign documents of the hog ratified by Colombian state in 1998. In the general code, we can see that documents granted abroad in order to be valid and comply with the requirement of legality should be apostled. Public documents granted in foreign countries by officials should be presented apostled as agreed on international treaties ratified by Colombia. So we understand that documents complying with those requirements are granted um, according to the national law, and we respect them regarding the information uh, about the persons that have an identity in the country where they were born. It is important to bear in mind that one thing is the immigration policy and another different thing are the aspects related with the registration in the national registry. And that national registry establishes certain conditions. It's not the registry of nationality. It is the registry of birds. So it is very important regarding the migrant status that we can establish certain aspects that in Colombia are in into force for Venezuelan um, nationals. We understand the special situation our brothers from Venezuela are going through. These are persons Colombia has treated with great consideration and with the uh, um, goal of uh, making their situation better. That's why this uh, statute of temporal protection for Venezuelans is exceptional. It's not for every person in the continent or the region. It is exclusively for Venezuelans, for our brothers from Venezuela. It is a process, humanitarian process that benefits 1.8 million Venezuelans in national territory in Colombia who will have this temporal protection for 10 years so they can be part legally of the productive activity of the country's access, uh, goods and services, and, and all kinds of rights uh, except from uh, political rights. This temporal protection has allowed Venezuelan migrants to have 320,000 documents that allow them to uh, move around the territory and access health services and all services 
as persons in transit in Colombia, and they are entitled to rights that the Colombia has granted. But we also have special cases regarding minors who are the only ones in a stateless situations. They uh, parents were born in Colombia. Those uh, those uh, children born in Colombia. Uh, whose parents are from Venezuela, which includes more than 705,000 children that are benefited by these measures uh, who are registered in the National Registry of uh, Birth as uh, children of Venezuelan parents that were born in Colombia. As a consequence, they are beneficiaries of everything uh, of that status um, for regarding the education system, health services, and all the services and benefits, all Colombians are granted by the constitution. Only four children of a Venezuelan parent, Primero La Niñez program. So the National Colombian has been generous with its uh, public policies. And it's very important to highlight that Venezuelans with uh, Venezuelan nationality who are the sons or daughters of Colombian parents fulfilling all legal requirements were e registered after 2015 in the National Registry. 550,000 uh, persons were uh, registered in accordance with law. So those who comply with the requirements have been respected because most of those 550,000 have complied with the requirements to obtain nationality from the point of view of their registration in the National Registry. 559,000. It is important to take into account that the media outlets since 2013 to 2015 have spread the news through which uh, criminal groups with the need uh, or taking advantage of the need of migrants who had fake documents and fake um, civil birth registries have taken advantage of that. The greatest number of persons involved in this criminal activity are from Venezuela. There's a great number of persons who have moved to the territory of Colombia, but also nationalities from other countries, for example, from Syria, Cuba, China, also Venezuelans who have illegally obtained the ID and uh, passport and were captured in the US, for example, in France, in Spain, Italy, in other countries as responsible of um, acts of terrorism and drug trafficking and human trafficking. They were not only persons born in Venezuela. There were also persons born in other places, in other countries, who were benefited and, and obtained illegally Colombian documents. These Colombians who have an ID and a passport can visit countries, members of the Schengen Agreement without uh, requiring a visa, which applies to Colombian um, nationals that visit Europe for less than 90 days, which was even more attractive for criminals to illegally produce Colombian documents, uh, creating false uh, identities, which uh, uh, hinders um, and attacks our legality through the national direction of civil registry established by law in the constitution we reviewed civil uh, birth registration with the following limitations first that they were granted extemporaneously to people under uh, 18 born in a foreign country son of daughter of Colombian parents, all holders of the nationality of the country of origin. And third, that with that birth 
registration, they had a nationality card. As a result, the greatest number we can identify is of persons born in Venezuela affected with documents illegally obtained. And as a result, we have 25,000. Those were the only ones affected. But we have also found Colombians. When I say Colombians, I mean persons who were born in other places and they uh, said they were Colombians to illegally uh, get documents saying they were born in Colombia using uh, mechanisms so that people can be extemporaneously registered in the registry. We were able to establish that there were documents obtained according to the protocol of registration and they were um, analyzed by and by one. We have persons from the Ecuador, persons born in the US, Spain, Cuba, Repo Dominican Republic, Costa Rica. This was the result we got after the work of um, analyzing this system of, of registration. And in fact, for five months, we analyzed each of the documents, taking into account the protocols authorized by the National Registry and the different offices in the country. And we were able to see that some of them were obtained through illegal documents thousands of, of authentications through false uh, apostle, which were used to uh, mislead uh, officials. They provided a um, birth certificate with a postal that belonged to a different person. That illegal action annuls the um, documents. We also observe birth uh, certificates that were granted to Venezuelans without having any Colombian parents. And they, and their parents uh, in this birth um, registry, their parents were from Venezuela, but they did, they did lie when uh, filling in the information in Colombia. The uh, perspective of the uh, state does not allow acquiring that civil status, especially when it is obtained through illegal acts. Out of 150,000 Colombian Venezuelans uh, whose parents were from Colombia, only 4.6%, 25,000 decided to use uh, illegal actions, criminal actions, in order to fulfill the uh, civil documentation, which led to the cancellation of the national identity card. The limitation of documents granted to uh, foreigners with Colombian parents this was fulfilled for five months, analyzing background documents, complying with uh, current legislation, as it is the mandate of the national director. We fulfill three channels of notification to persons who have never granted any data to uh, provide uh, any different uh, notification, which is established by law. That is what we did. We did it in person to those uh, we could, and also by mail to offer options to the persons who were being investigated. And they were informed about the uh, annulment. And when these persons got to know about this information, after the card was canceled, they were given the opportunity of uh, filling in the information if they comply with the requirements. If the document that you presented illegally, if the data, the false data that you presented did not uh, respect the truth, they could register once again. More than 520,000 uh, Venezuelan Colombians did that. 25,000 use other channels, other uh, means that are 
you know, acceptable for the uh, state in order to comply with corresponding legislation. Or 8.5 percent, 25,000 Venezuelans out of the 290 persons who were investigated and duly denounced before the national prosecutor the national archive was uh, used then because it was created to carry out that measure the results are there so that we can provide all the help and support so that persons can legally obtain, comply with law because aspects uh, related to migration are matters of politics that do not have to do with uh, registration in the civil birth registration. This national registry has dealt with all requests, no matter the channel used, uh, uh, different measures are implemented so that we can deal with the requirements of all persons as long as they comply with the law. That is all on behalf of the state. Thank you for your uh, presentation. We will start with the participation of the commission. I will give the floor to the country rapporteur in human mobility, Joel Hernandez. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to read the representation of the state and the civil society organizations who have brought this topic to our attention. I believe this is very concerning because it has been brought to our attention for uh, some time ago and the commission considered in, it uh, important so as to talk about it in our hearing in order to get to know the reasons that motivate this uh, administrative decision of reviewing uh, the uh, documents and the remedies at the reach of the people affected. In the commission, we have already, we have always valued the political, the migratory politi uh, policy followed by Colombia and which has benefited to 1,800,000 Colombian people, but we have been uh, speaking here of another situation, which has to do with the annulment of registrations, of birth registrations, of um, uh, identity cards that are affecting the life of approximately 43,000 people. The first thing I would like to mention when I heard upon hearing the director of the civil registries to get to know whether the office of vital record uh, reviewed 5100 uh, files one on one so as to determine that 40,000 were files that were wrongly filed and secondly and the most important thing is that here we are speaking about the due process of law. The legal warranties are in the Section 8 of the Inter-American Convention and the civil society have mentioned that. It is important to know whether these cancellations of the identity card were not arbitrary and whether they were performed according to law. This means that there was a personal notification of the administrative procedure, but also that it was granted to people the right to defense and that decision could be uh, reviewed then if these uh, universe of 25,000 people 8% of the total amount of people born in Venezuela of these universe the decision to cancel has had been revoked by the administrative avenue or by the judicial avenue the third question 
uh, is to get to know which is a proceeding that the affected people have at their reach, especially when they were not notified in a timely manner. And I would like to here approach the last topic that has to do with the disproportionate burden, which is the requirement of the apostille. It is clear enough that due to the situation in Venezuela, and since Venezuela and Colombia do not have diplomatic relations, how people affected in these conditions obtain an apostille when the decisions of the constitutional uh, court have given them the possibility to resort to two witnesses instead of the apostille. So that is a third question. I believe that this is the most important thing in this conversation to get to know which are the paths, which are the resources available to the persons affected in order to recover their uh, cancelled identity card. Thank you. Thank you, Rapporteur. I would like to give the floor to the first Vice President, Commissioner Eduardo Rallon. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning. I would like to read the organization, Sam, the state. It's a complex situation and that unfortunately violates um, rights and it's quite concerning to us. I have a question here when we speak about the annulment of uh, Office of Vital Records and the cancellations of the identity card. The civil society exposes that this is an arbitrary act and the state, when it intervenes, it indicates that they proceed in such a way or in some cases um, people had presented fraudulent documents and uh, so my question is whether these cancellations or announcement of registries in all cases have to do with a, um, a deficiency of the document or a fraudulent action or if there was a, um, an error in those annulments. And the second aspect is how to solve this topic, this problem. Sometimes there is some kind of rigidity in terms of the regulations and we have the number of, a, of affected persons and the state itself says that there are people that um, do these in good faith. If So we is there an, a possibility to uh, enable and um, an administrative procedure that can modify the situation of these people. I will give the floor to Commissioner Arasemena now. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning, everybody. I would like to acknowledge the civil society organizations for um, taking up this a struggle in a very complex situation. This is not only the migration issue or the that of the Office of Vital Record, but it has to do with all the rights of several people that are being affected due to these circumstances. So I would like to thank the civil society for this and to the persons that gave their uh, declarations and their testimonies. I would also like to recognize them because it's the proof of um, what they have to undergo in these situations. To the representative of the state, I would also like to acknowledge uh, them, but I, I would also like to State about the treatment of the Venezuelan brothers and sisters. This is something that the Commission has already highlighted in several opportunities, and I would like to especially mention the recognition of children and adolescents in these measures that this measure, Primero la Niñez, this plan effectively reached. However, the reality of 
Well, this can mean to parents of these children, the situation of the cancellation of their identity cards. And I would like to echo what Commissioner Joel said and Commissioner Estuardo said in terms of the assessment that can be made of the re disproportionate requirements, especially due to that tragic situation that the population is, the migrant population is undergoing of Venezuelans or Colombians that have been in this situation. And the state mentioned in its first intervention that there are proposals for dialogue tables in order to look for ways of mitigating those requirements that can overwhelm the capacity of people that are requesting those um those responses that are asking for those responses so my intervention is this hearing which is very important very complex with a lot of information which allows us to precisely identify this reality i would like to know whether you have this information disaggregated on persons, category, age groups. I would like to have this information for the assessment of what it implies for each group, for each sector, and especially those groups with special vulnerabilities in which uh, their situation is even worsened. That's my um, request. And I also would like to call upon the state to look for formulas in order to uh, address this uh, situation of human crisis, humanitarian crisis of uh, how, how thousands of people. Because when we speak of thousands of people, this situation becomes even worse. So that was all, Madam President, thank you. I would like to uh, acknowledge the presence of the state and the measures that were granted that the commission has valued uh, in due time. And I would also like to thank the um, representatives of the civil society for their work and uh, their efforts. I would also like to remind you of the documents that the commissioner adopt, the commission adopted to 2018, when, where it recognizes the critical situation of the Venezuelan people, the inter-American principles of resolution for 2019 and the practical guideline and the report we made on the process of law. Along those lines, I would also add to what Mr. Uh, and then said about the uh, apostate. Even though there are processes that are always necessary, there is a humanitarian crisis situation that we have to consider. As Commissioner Arosemena said, both the data from the civil society and the state, can we have a disaggregation so as to get to know all the age groups and the groups of particular particular vulnerabilities. I am especially worried about the risks that people may suffer when they are denied of these identity cards. I'm thinking of pregnant women, women or pregnant people or what we detected together with the AHCAR in order of people, uh, the difficulties to maintain a house or to have the house access to housing and we would also like to have a, a dialogue table where apart from this important information provided by the state we can identify those concrete cases on which we have been working in order to 
analyze which are those cases that the state uh, has indicated as fraudulent, but which are the cases in which we have a complex situation. I would like to ask the assistant secretary, executive, executive secretary, whether she has questions, the rapporteur, uh, Maria Soledad, yes. Thank you, Madam President. Briefly, I would like to briefly express my concern due to the impact that this measure had, in especially in the ESC uh, rights of the population affected, and to ask both the representatives of the state and the society whether you can deepen on the report response that you would like to give in uh, response to the right to health. We have heard of situations of people who had their treatment of cancer or dialysis interrupted, and we would like to have more, um, more uh, specific data as to these topics. Other people also had lost the access to their bank accounts. All the information that you can provide us would be uh, much welcome. Thank you, Madam Rapporteur. I will give the floor now to the civil society for 12 minutes and then to the state for 12 more minutes. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to mention that uh, speaking about these fraudulent cases, we have not uh, proven that those fraudulent cases had been a product of those 43 thousand that have been affected by this measure and this situation does not justify that there are no processes in order to protect the fundamental right to due process of law and that allow people to trust in the uh, principle of legitimate trustworthiness in the administration even though there is, there may be a justification if the state has a, a legitimate purpose with this measure. These uh, are not correlated with the principle of the process of law. And this is really significant because this measure affected the presumption of innocence of people. And we consider that this is a measure that criminalizes those people and that affects, directly affects their situation of human mobility uh, since they know uh, and these people were not sentenced by any uh, any crime whatsoever. And we would also like to state, secondly, that this measure subjects people to a situation of irregularity of their uh, migrant situation, forced migrant situations, and they cannot get access to any regularization measures as the ones measured by the state at the beginning of this hearing. And even though, as it was mentioned by the commission, especially in the case of the Dominican and Haitian people, we have to mention that this is a violation to the standards and the people that have access or has a right to the nationality of a certain country have to access. I will give now the floor to my colleague Laura. I would like to briefly um, underscore that the commission and especially in the case uh, the young girls against Dominican Republic has uh, said that the deprivation of identity is, uh, violates the right to identity of people since their rights are not uh, recognized by the state nor by private persons. I would also like to highlight that even though in the civil society we recognize the efforts of the state in this hearing, we are referring especially to national Colombian nationals as a consequence of the nationality of their parents. Uh, so what has to do with the migrant conditions is not pertinent for the arguments we are posing here in. in third, thirdly, we would like to say that the uh, Office of Vital Records of the state had recognized the difficulty that there is for the people coming from Venezuela can have access to the Apple Store, and that is why they had established a mechanism in order to recognize witnesses. 
that is the argument uh, even though the circular that contemplated the situation is no longer in force, there is still a decree uh, that pre provides for the same exception. And in order to end and to give the floor to Maria Camila Vega, I would like to state that the uh, forged identity is not a crime in the University of Los Andes and the organizations part of the network. We have been seeing detentions on the police when they confuse the uh, crime of uh, replacement or substitution of identity with a fake identity, which is not a crime in itself. I would also like to mention briefly a case uh, regarding what Julissa Mandisha was saying that is an attack foundation, those who could listen to the testimony of Gabriela Arena. She told a case of a person who killed herself because her uh, bank accounts were frozen and she could not pay for the how their house and the her house uh, was uh, taken from her so the life they have built as colombians is uh, also falling apart i would also like to call the attention on the people uh, 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 people who are at risk of being stateless, even though this measure did not have an impact in the case of the civil registry of uh, identity cards of children and adolescents, there is a risk for the uh, enrollment in the registry because if they're the parents of that person that do not have the Colombian nationality, we had evidence cases in the national federation of persons where where they cannot update this registry due to the inexistence of uh, uh, identity of their parents this is why it is important to insist uh, in having this dialogue table not only to to solve this situation in an immediate manner but also taking into consideration that facing a new administration that is going to start in the next three months it is necessary to address the situation beforehand because this is a situation that uh, has to be solved exclusively by the Colombian state. As we said in this hearing, the civil society organization shown that there was a prohibition of uh, the access to identity and several other rights were impacted and that is why we request the existence of such working table. Laura, Cristina. Yes, I would like to add that the civil society is going to send a report, detailed report, in which we will include other problems related to the nationality issue that we have identified. And as we are part of the Clinica Jurídica para Migrantes, a program of 27 universities in the country to provide legal advisory. Um, there is information that, for example, the uh, High Commissioners, uh, UN High Commissioner for Refugees, can provide, and we will share that information with the Commission. Thank you. I will now give the floor to the representatives of the state for 12 minutes. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. I will now give the floor to the uh, Rodrigo Perez Monroy to answer all the questions that have been posed by the commission. And we will be able to share all the information that we're not able to answer right now by written. Thank you. It is very important to say that the state of Colombia through its foreign office and the National Registry expresses solidarity that such a case, case of such nature, uh, corresponds in order to adopt measures in taking into account the situation lived by the uh, affected persons, taking into account the uh, high number of migrants from Venezuela to Colombia, we were able to see that is very relevant to gather figures that are precise the civil society uh, says that is not important or that is something that was mentioned 
by us without any relevancy. Uh, migratory policies have to do with humanitarian treatment to all migrants. The aspects related to registration have to do with requirements that are not established by Colombia alone, but all countries in the region. And it is, uh, we have to comply with what the law establishes regarding that content not out of wrong interpretations that have been mentioned here that uh, include the participation of witnesses for the recognition of persons born in a foreign country so that the apostle uh, is not required for Colombians born in Colombia uh, children of uh, Colombian parents we uh, ask for a document uh, or two witnesses, Colombians, exclusively for Colombians. Persons born abroad uh, are asked for an apostle. The apostle is a document that has to do with an origin and compliance with international standards. This is requested to the entity to uh, carry out following processes. It is very important to bear in mind that 520,000 persons, Colombian Venezuelans, did present the uh, apostle document, 520,000. Out of them, 25,000 have problems with the creation of their registry as it was created with documents that were uh, presented illegally. The commissioner asked whether we have reviewed 500,000. I would like to say something that is very important for you to take into account. This uh, process of analysis of the uh, national registration, it, this was carried out for more than 500,000 Colombians, Venezuelans, all foreigners that were registered in the national registry. But as we have warned, the fact that uh, their extemporaneous are uh, older than 18 and no underage uh, person was affected. That person born abroad, not only Venezuelans, the children of Colombian parents that could have nationality of origin and requested the national registry by showing that they were born in a foreign country. And third, that Using that, they had a national identity card or other documents. 550,000 was the total number of Venezuelans and Colombians that were registered incorrectly. All, all foreigners registered. We went over more than 200,000 and we identified that the greatest number of irregular documentations corresponded to Venezuelans. We also uh, identified different problems which we have corrected so that persons in this particular situation can solve the problem that they themselves created uh, with the documents which is established by decree 756 which are causes that have to be taken into account. When this is identified, they should carry out a new registration. When the registration is not carried out correctly, the new registration should be done in order to repeat it. This is formally nulled, annulled. That registration, as they are not duly identified, may, it's not that that omission has to be corrected. 
the registration has to be carried out all over again. These are not arbitrary decisions. This is established by law. And the persons were summoned so they could carry out a new registration. The same number is used, so we don't have any problem to have a new registration that complies with the law to maintain the number of their uh, ID. 2,700 were presented. They have uh, appeared before the uh, corresponding office with the apostol document. They all have an explanation. What do we do? We reestablish the uh, new ID with new inscription fulfilling, complying with the uh, norm. One thing are migratory uh, policies, and another thing is the sovereign current legislation regarding the uh, inscription in the National Registry of Nationals that should comply with different demands that can be analyzed through the roundtables that are created in order to solve everything except for irregular behavior of, uh, for example, presenting illegal documents, such as persons that uh, claim to have certain information which was not true. As we have reviewed a great number of registrations that affect Venezuelas mostly, and we have offered a solution uh, transportation of respectful transportation and the state exhausts all options so that persons going through these situations can feel relieved because the administration responds to those needs. And I'd like to conclude by saying that one thing is to incorporate migration policies that are related to this. And another thing is the information that is implicit in the civil registry. And as national director of national registries, I have to, of civil status, I have to uh, comply with what our current legislation demands. Thank you. If the state representatives have concluded, Yes, we have concluded our participation. So we are about to conclude this hearing. There are some final comments I would like to make. I would like to thank the representatives of the state for all the information that you have presented and the fact that you have answered one of the letters we have sent a request and information. That reply shows that the integration of uh, Inter-American System for the Protection of Human Rights um, partially uh, yells it's a sovereignty for the protection of human rights. The application of protocols is something the state ratify willingly. Without a doubt, the uh, commission congratulates and thanks the representatives of the civil society, each one of you, not only for being here, but for accompanying every day the persons that have to go through this situation. Undoubtedly, everything but crime, not the state or the civil society nor the commission could uh, grant a hearing if there were a crime. I would like to thank your participation, the team of the executive secretariat to the civil society. Any uh, question or information, you can get in touch with us and the state as well. And finally, we are at your disposal. Inter-American Commission as a body that is part of the OES to provide technical support in any working table or dialogue that may be established. I think that a working table or dialogue is always useful. 
Although civil society organizations representing so many persons, there are cases in which there's no clarity, we are at your disposal in order to provide or to facilitate that dialogue as part of our mandate. I would like to thank your presence here for your, uh, your hard work. And I would like to say that many persons going through this persons uh, going, going through this problem are watching this hearing. And the commission would like to express its solidarity, its constant support today and always. Thank you. And the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Goodbye.